Welcome to Castlecomer Discovery Park in Kilkenny, which is home to Ireland's longest zip lines. Built in 2016 by Skywalker Adventure Builders, Castlecomer Discovery Park's dual cable zip lines stretch to a whopping 300 metres. To put that into perspective, imagine if the Eiffel Tower fell over. That's how long it is. It reaches 35 metres at its highest point. That's as tall as six fully grown giraffes stacked on top of each other. But what actually is a zipline? Let's find out. So for a zipline, you need two towers, one big and one slightly smaller, and some cables that will carry people, and in some cases cargo, from point A to point B. So how can we be sure that these cables are strong enough to hold our zipline riders? Each zipline is made up of three cables, which are all securely anchored to a fixed point. These steel cables are made up of a group of smaller cables wrapped around each other to make one big reinforced cable. This makes the cable strong enough to carry the weight of roughly nine cars each. But how does the zipline rider safely attach to these strong cables? We use a system called Smart Belays. When Smart Belays are connected to the zipline, they are clicked into place to ensure you won't fall off. Inside the Smart Belays are small wheels called pulley wheels. These wheels reduce friction and increase speed, allowing the zipline rider to move smoothly and quickly down the cables. There is also an additional cable above the rider to support the braking system at the end. Let's talk about zipline slope and why the amount of tension on the cable is key to create the best experience. Okay, so let's draw in our start tower and end tower and then we'll add in our cable. Let's make it fully tight with no slack and see how that affects our zipline rider, Tom. Here's Tom. Let's see how Tom gets on going down the cable with no slack. Oh, that didn't end well for Tom. Tom built up too much speed and was not able to slow down. Tom, ready to go again? No. This time, let's add in loads of slack and see if that will be better for Tom. Oh, that didn't work either. What happened there? There was too much slack, which made the slope too deep, causing Tom to hit the ground. So what is the solution? To fix this, we need to have the right amount of tension on the cables to create the perfect slope. Here's where the maths comes in. The slope on a big zip line should be no more than 6% of the total distance. In Castlecomer Discovery Park, our zip line is 300 metres, which means there should be an 18 metre slope. We also have to allow for sag. Sag is the amount the zip line will drop once the rider's weight is added. The sag should be no more than 2% of the total zip line length, which in our case is about 6 metres. Here. Okay, so putting what we learned into practice, let's see how Tom gets on with this slope. Woohoo! That worked! This is exactly what we wanted. Tom used gravity, mass and acceleration to speed up, which created a lot of momentum. But if we didn't counteract the momentum, Tom would have went too fast into the end tower, like we saw before. To avoid this, we created an opposing force to bring Tom to a safe stopping speed. We did this by creating an upward slope at the end of the cable, by attaching the end of the cable to a higher point on the end tower than the lowest point of the slope. This created the perfect incline for Tom to slow down. Speaking of slowing down, what creates speed in the first place? Before we talk about speed, we need to understand some basic laws of motion from Sir Isaac Newton. But who's he? Sir Isaac Newton was an English scientist born in 1643 who developed the laws of motion that we still use today, including on our zipline. The first law states that an object in motion tends to stay in motion, and an object at rest tends to stay at rest, unless it's acted upon by another force. This concept is called inertia. So applying this concept to our zipline means that once you start, you don't stop until we use an opposing force. Luckily, we have better systems in place to help you stop safely. I'll show you how soon, but for now, let's get back to speed. To calculate our speed, we need the help of a magic triangle, which is broken into three parts, known as D, 
over s multiplied by t. These stand for distance, speed and time. We know the distance of our zipline is 300 metres. The average time it takes for a person to complete the zipline is 30 seconds. So to find our speed, we need to divide our distance over time. In this case, it's 300 metres divided by 30 seconds, which equals to 10 metres per second. To calculate our kilometres per hour, we need to find the minutes per hour first. So we multiply 10 metres per second by 60, as there are 60 seconds in a minute, which equals to 600 metres per minute. To calculate our metres per hour, we will multiply 600 times 0 0.06, which is equal to 36 kilometres per hour. But wait, is it possible to go any faster? Let's have a look at some of the factors that affect our speed. These include weather, body positioning and force. But let's start with the weather. When the cable gets wet due to rain, it results in faster speeds as there is less friction between the pulley wheels and the cables. Whereas on dry days, there is no water on the cable, which increases friction, resulting in slower speeds. The wind is another factor that affects our speed. Because we are so high up on the zip line, the speed of the wind will be much higher than the ground because we are above the canopy layer for most of the journey. If the wind becomes too strong, it acts as an opposing force making it too difficult for the rider to make it to the other side. However, if the wind is traveling behind the zipliner, the opposite happens and significantly increases the rider's speed. To help us move faster and maintain inertia, we can use body positioning. There are two ways to position our bodies to become more aerodynamic. One is called the cannonball. The cannonball position is achieved by curling up into a ball. This works because tucking in your arms and legs removes additional resistance. The other position is called torpedo, which is achieved by leaning back and lifting your legs so you become a straight line and parallel to the ground. By doing either of these positions, you'll become more aerodynamic and increase your speed through the air. Another way we can increase our speed is by controlling how much force we jump with. With the help of Newton's second law of motion, we can understand more about force. Newton's second law of motion states that force is equal to mass times acceleration. And this equation looks like F equals M times A. To apply this to our zip line, it means the more mass, otherwise known as weight, and the faster you accelerate off the start platform, the more force you will generate and the faster you will travel. Now that you figure out how to measure your speed and to control your speed, how do we slow down? So how does the rider slow down at the end? The rider slows down due to the slope created that we already discussed, but the next objective is bringing our rider to a controlled stop. Our self-regulating magnetic braking system, otherwise known as zip stop, works by using the rider's belays to hit the zip stop pads, which acts like a soft release seatbelt, bringing our rider to a controlled stop. The zip stop system adapts to the rider's weight and speed when they come into contact with it. So the faster the rider comes into the end tower, the more resistance the zip stop creates to slow the rider down. Now that you've learned how our zip line works, let's get you harnessed up and see how fast you can travel. We hope to see you soon at Castlecomer Discovery Park.